Whenever I'm teaching new developers, I probably sound like a broken record talking about the importance of Googling, of finding out information you currently don't have. It's also something that is very difficult to teach and difficult just to convince students that it's a real thing. I've seen student reactions ranging from skepticism, polite skepticism, to rage. I've had students insist that I'm just making excuses for myself when I have to Google in front of them or when I tell them I don't know something, um, which I understand, right? In most industries, a lot of different backgrounds, if you don't know something, if you have to turn to your phone or your, your computer and look something up, you're considered incompetent or just not qualified for the role. However, being a developer is very different. Uh, I've tried a couple different things. I've brought in outside developers into my classrooms, boot camps, and had them actually learn something new live in front of the students, get stuck, Google. It makes a good point, but it's just not that engaging. It's not fun. Like I love doing crosswords, but it's not fun to watch someone solve a crossword. After some thinking, I came up with a new approach. I reached out to the best developer that I know personally, one of my good friends. He is 10 times the developer I am. And I basically asked him if I could just look at his browser history, everything he searched, all the web pages he viewed for a given week of work. He wasn't so thrilled. I begged him. Eventually he came around, but he insisted I needed to talk to his boss and you know make sure it was all kosher with his company. So it took some time, but eventually we worked something out. Uh, there's a couple restrictions. The first, my friend actually insisted that I don't mention his name or give away any personal details. Even as a very senior developer, he was afraid of looking weak, showing any gaps in his knowledge or revealing, you know, what he had to Google. So we're not using his real name. I'm going to call him History Developer X. So his employer asked me not to mention the name of the company, but it's a tech company in San Francisco. Real shocker there. Between 100 and 300 employees, 85 engineers. Our Mystery Developer X is a front-end engineer there. He's been there since 2013. He started pretty much at the bottom. These titles over here, these roles are not the actual names they use at his company. Uh, his company uses more specific, unique terms, so I figured I'd just anonymize it a bit. But they're basically equivalent. So we started pretty much at the bottom. He's been promoted a bunch of times, uh, and now he's actually above a senior software engineer. I hesitate to talk about salary, but I think for some people, it will lend more credibility to this mystery developer and more credibility to this video. So you can see he's doing very well. Started at $80,000. Now he makes over $250,000 plus stock options and a whole bunch of other benefits. So he's someone who's been recognized for his good work. He's been promoted. He's not, you know, faking his way through it. He knows his stuff. He's not a toddler pounding away on a laptop on his bed. He's a full grown man pounding away on his laptop on his bed. So the plan is very, very simple. I asked him to go to work for a week and just not use, not hide anything, not delete his history, just leave it completely untouched and then find a way to send it to me at the end of the week and I would go through it. There was a ton of data to look through. 4,619 different websites. Not all of those are Google, of course. Most of them are probably Reddit and Facebook. So I combed through all of them. I saw a lot of things I'll never forget. I learned a lot about this friend. But after a few days of crunching the numbers, we have some results. So here we go. The first thing you need to know is that Monday and Tuesday, Mystery Developer X actually got sick uh, and had a bunch of meetings, so he wasn't really writing any code. So we're focusing on the last three days of the week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So these are code-related searches only. We're not counting, you know, date night ideas, San Francisco, Google searches, just code-related. You can see it varies quite a bit. Wednesday, there were 35 or so separate Google searches. Thursday, only 14 or 15. And then Friday, nearly 100 searches. And each one of those searches spawned maybe two to three separate clicks on blog posts, Stack Overflow questions, uh, documentation. So Google is only one part of the picture. So let's look at the first day, Wednesday, in more detail. There were 35 separate code-related Google searches and over 400 code-related links that he actually clicked on. So here are some of the main things he ran into, some of the main topics he was looking for. Let's talk about the first one, Angular CLI Project Path. So this is the exact rabbit hole he went down. He ran into a problem where he was using Angular CLI and the project path was not working. Some of his links, relative links were screwed up. So he started here, did some more Google searches. I included the typos. Changing public path, Angular JSON CLI deploy URL. He read some docs, found a stack overflow, unable to use relative image paths, went to a GitHub issue, Another Stack Overflow post about setting public path, a 
another Google search. Angular router cannot match any routes. Angular router public path, base href Angular CLI. Then he read a Medium post. More Google searches, Angular CLI base href versus deploy URL. Hopefully you get the picture here, right? Stack Overflow, Google, Google, Stack Overflow, GitHub issue, GitHub issue, Git, and then back to Google. Later that day, he was trying to figure out how you pass files, pass arguments to NPM commands. He uses NPM all the time, but he still was unsure how to do that. So he went to Google. NPM scripts, pass options. That opened up a Stack Overflow post, sending command line arguments to NPM script. Apparently it wasn't quite what he was looking for, he updated the search, passed arguments to sub npm command, and then he found, I assume this is what he needed. It was the last search he did on this topic. He found some blog posts that explained it. Now let's talk about day two, which was Thursday, much quieter day as far as Googling. I talked to him about this. He said he was mainly just working on some forms the whole day, and he didn't run into a whole bunch of issues. He started out with Angular Router, trying to figure out how to hide routes or if there was a better way to hide routes on mount. So there's a couple searches here. Angular hide routes depending on guard. He goes to Stack Overflow and finds what he needs. Now the second one, creating a new database in MySQL, or MySQL, uh, some of you might find interesting. He had to Google how to do the most basic fundamental thing in MySQL, creating a new database. I talked to him about this, I'm not making fun of him or anything, but uh, he laughed. He said, I dropped the database, which I usually don't do, and I needed to figure out how to remake it. I've had to do this like twice in five years. So he Googled create database MySQL and then found the documentation and that was it. Then we get to day three, Friday. There were 96 Google searches that had to do with code and hundreds of links that he followed. And most of them had to do with the last bullet point here, which we'll come back to. But I wanna focus on the second one. Cleanest way to get first item in a JavaScript array. It seems like a very, very simple, trivial thing. Here are his searches. First element of JS array. I asked him about this. Of course, he knows how to get the first element in an array. He was just trying to find the the best sort of cleanest, newest way, if there was a way. So we followed a Stack Overflow post to find the ES6 way. And then he looked into array.find. Then he searched ES6, get first element of array. He thought maybe there was a way to do it using destructuring. At the end of the day, there wasn't something but he was making a pull request to an open source project and he just wanted to use the fanciest way of getting the first element from an array. Definitely a very simple, basic thing to Google, but I thought it could be interesting to, to learn that this very high level engineer is still looking stuff like that up. Okay, so let's talk about the last point, breaking issue with Jest after updating. So Jest is a JavaScript testing framework. Uh, his, he's using it on a project and he updated Jest and all of his tests, or some of his tests stopped working. It just caused this big cascading issue that took the entire day to resolve. So he looked at over 200 pages trying to solve this, 200 different results. My Chrome window, it freaks out if I try and open them all. So here is a small selection. He started by Googling the error he got after he updated, just test.ts TypeScript not found. And then he went into the Stack Overflow post trying to understand what was going on. Then he tried the exact same search, but by putting quotes around test TS, he was hoping to get more specific results. I do that all the time. I think a lot of people do. Then he moved on Angular Builder Jest. He found a repo for the tool he was using. Uh, he tried a couple other things, Jest preset Angular, read the source code, did a search for test.ts in the source code on GitHub, read some blog posts. Here's one he read. Went back to GitHub, found some issues, DOM test issues after upgrading. So this was the first hint that he was on the right track. Someone else had a similar problem after updating something. So he kept going and he figured out that what was causing the problem is after he updated Jest, the drag event was not defined. So in Jest, you can test a user's interaction with your website. So he had a drag event and it just wasn't working anymore. It used to work fine. So he dug into GitHub some more, kept going, found some example apps, did some searches, looked for more issues. So I skipped ahead. Eventually, he figured out that the problem had to do with another tool called JS DOM. And there was an update where the drag event and mouse events were changed or removed or broken. So he ended up having to just implement his own code, go back to an old version, uh, copy it from GitHub and implement it on his own in his application. So to wrap things up, one guy over three days made a ton of Google searches. That's part of the job. 
If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And now, this. I have a secret. I've been hiding something. It's been eating me up inside. It's time I tell the world. I... I Google. Yeah, I Google. I Google. I Google. <laughs> yeah, I Google. I Bing. I mean Google. I know that I can't know everything. It's a big world, and I have a small brain. I'm not afraid to ask for help when I need it. Don't let shame control your life. Live by your own rules. We are all Googlers. We are all Googlers. We Google! If you experience a Googling lasting more than four hours, seek immediate medical assistance.